smiling. When I first saw Joker, when I saw you. In the annals of cinema, Joker Folie a deux stands out as one of the most shocking reversals ever. While the original film earned critical acclaim and an Oscar, its sequel has emerged as one of the year's most tedious, unnecessary, and reviled releases. Throughout film history, we've seen our fair share of disappointing sequels, but this one takes it a step further by seemingly punishing fans of its predecessor. Although the notion of a sequel to the beloved original felt puzzling from the start, the mounting details only amplify the confusion and apprehension. Yet few anticipated the extent of the misstep. In fact, nearly every element that resonated with audiences in the first Joker has been stripped away in this sequel. So exactly what went so wrong with Joker 2? Why was this movie even made? And where do things go from here? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the raging dumpster fire that is modern Hollywood. Before we dive in, Take a moment to like and subscribe if just a fraction of the 95% of you who watch but haven't subscribed yet hit that button, it would make a huge difference in helping the channel grow. And the best part is, subscribing is completely free. Now let's explore how the film went so wrong and identify the key missteps. We previously covered the original Joker movie in one of my live streams and its profound societal impact. So it's no wonder that anticipation for the sequel was high, given how compelling the first film was. The original Joker resonated deeply with millions around the globe, yet initially, expectations were unclear. Following the footsteps of Heath Ledger's iconic portrayal, one that is both haunting and extraordinary and will be remembered for generations, was no small feat. However, Joaquin Phoenix's interpretation of the character, combined with the film's gritty atmosphere, captivated audiences and established it as one of the standout films of the decade. Critics, on the other hand, weren't as quick to embrace the film. The initial responses from Hollywood were mixed, with discussions surrounding the potential for the movie to spark an incel rebellion and concerns about possible copycat crimes. However, when those fears proved unfounded and the audience's affection for the film became clear, critics softened their stance and Joker ultimately won two Oscars that year. Despite Hollywood's initial indifference, the film tackled themes that are increasingly scarce in contemporary cinema. A significant aspect of the film's allure lies in its depiction of mental illness. While many movies address this topic, few capture it with the same unflinching honesty as Joker. Typically, mental illness is presented in isolation, featuring one unstable character amidst a rational world. However, Joker delves much deeper, examining the connection between mental illness and the societal influences that contribute to it. Rarely do films illustrate how feelings of alienation in a hostile environment can impact an individual's mental state. Joker effectively portrays the struggle of someone seeking help, only to be let down by those around them, leading to devastating outcomes. Understanding this process is crucial for society. Unlike most contemporary media that either vilifies or overlooks those with mental health issues, Joker makes significant strides in challenging these one-dimensional views. All these themes came together seamlessly through Joaquin Phoenix's performance, showcasing the immense dedication he brought to the role. Much of his success stemmed from his physical embodiment of the character, his sudden, erratic movements, his anguished laughter, and the significant weight loss he underwent. While Phoenix's portrayal was vital in bringing the story to life, the film's set design and overall atmosphere also played a crucial role. The depiction of a grim, unforgiving city teetering on the brink of chaos echoed the essence of Taxi Driver, resonating beyond just the plot. These representations of a city in crisis have only grown more relevant with time. Joker was lightning in a bottle, addressing modern societal issues that many films simply don't acknowledge, and this made it the second most profitable R-rated movie of all time, only recently dethroned this year by Deadpool and Wolverine. The story struck a chord with millions worldwide, presenting an open-ended narrative that hinted at various avenues a sequel could explore, yet it primarily remained a self-contained tale. 
As many have pointed out, there was really no necessity for a follow-up Joker film. It was designed to stand alone without any intention of launching a franchise or new universe. The director later confirmed that there was never a plan to create a series. However, it wasn't surprising when Warner Brothers expressed interest in a sequel. In fact, early reports suggested they were contemplating an entire series of different origin stories. Given that Joker generated over $500 million in profits and achieved significant cultural impact, it was only natural for the studio to pursue more content particularly in the light of the recent failures of other DC movies. Artistically, the necessity of a sequel is much more contentious. The plot threads from the first film were resolved, and Arthur Fleck had already transformed into the Joker, effectively conveying the film's intended message. Given its distance from the comics and the broader DC universe, it seemed peculiar for a sequel to delve into that aspect. Naturally, for a sequel to materialize, both Joaquin Phoenix and director Todd Phillips had to be on board. Since Joker had significantly enriched both of them, the lure of additional money likely wouldn't be the driving force. In earlier interviews, Todd Phillips expressed that he would only pursue a sequel if he could find a way to create thematic resonance within the original film. While it would undoubtedly revisit similar themes, the pressing question remained, how could they advance the story and its underlying message? Joaquin Phoenix also expressed uncertainty, stating that he struggled to envision how they could create a genuine sequel. However, it's clear that a plan eventually took shape. For two years, there was no word about the sequel until it was confirmed to be in development in 2021. Then, more details surfaced, including the title, hinting at a mental illness shared between two characters. Unsurprisingly, this led many to speculate that the film would feature Harley Quinn, but it was still just speculation. Given how focused on loneliness and isolation the first film was, it did raise some eyebrows. People's uncertainty about the sequel only grew later in the year. In August, we got the first concrete details about the film, other than the title, when it was revealed that Lady Gaga was central to the project. It was all but confirmed that the sequel would at least partially focus on Harley Quinn, but that news paled in comparison to the fact that it was also going to be a musical. The very act of performing had been central to the first film. A lot of its mass appeal could be pinned down to the famous dancing scene that dominated the internet for weeks afterward. However, the choice to make it a full-blown musical was still a very risky one, Considering the film's audience and who it appealed to, it didn't seem like there would be that much overlap. Even as the film's release approached, it didn't seem like Warner Brothers or anyone else was entirely sure whether it was a musical. It was clear that there were lots of songs and musical numbers, but they were still hedging their bets. In an interview just before the first screenings, Lady Gaga stated that the way they approached music in this film was very special and extremely nuanced. I wouldn't necessarily say this is an actually a musical. In a lot of ways, it's very different. The way that the music is used is to really give the characters a way to express what they need to say. The director also said it wasn't a musical, but acknowledged that music and songs played a central role. Obviously, you can tell a story without singing. For fans of the original film, this represented a significant departure. Critics raised concerns that the sequel might lack a clear sense of its own identity. And they weren't wrong. While there was still excitement stemming from the success of the first movie, several indicators suggested potential letdowns, one of which was the absence of Martin Scorsese's taxi driver as a narrative reference point. Without that foundational element, there was a risk that the film could lose its coherence and core message. There were a few directions they could have taken. One option was to create a true sequel that continued with the themes and story of the first movie. But as mentioned before, Joker didn't really leave much room for this. The sequel could have explored the DC Universe more deeply, delving into other familiar characters and illustrating the Joker's evolution into a true villain. However, the first film already established its distinct separation from that universe. In fact, there were rumors that the original film was not initially intended to be a DC Joker movie until later in its production. This makes sense 
considering that the only connections to Batman and the broader universe are a few fleeting scenes in the characters' names. The other option was to completely detach from all of that and just make what amounts to an entirely different movie. It did seem like they were going in that direction with the choice to make it a musical, but even that was only a half measure. One of the main fears people had about the film was that it would hedge its bets, not really expanding on or progressing the story of the first film, but also not doing anything new or interesting either. This fear only grew when you look back at the director's track record. He also made The Hangover, which was so successful that it led to some unnecessary sequels that didn't really live up to the first movie. Despite all these concerns, the trailers that were released, despite all these concerns, the trailers that were released reassured some viewers. They were polished and revealed just enough about the film to pique interest without giving too much away. In fact, the trailers demonstrated that the cinematography and overall aesthetic of the movie would still be impressive. Additionally, Lady Gaga's prominent presence in the marketing led many to believe she would have a significant role in the film. Conversely, the trailers for the sequel did not reach nearly as wide of an audience. The final trailer for the original film boasts over 100 million views on YouTube, while the sequel's trailer has only garnered 30 million views. It was already evident that the new Joker movie needed to be outstanding to match its predecessor, but uncertainty grew even further when the first reviews began to surface. Unlike many films, critics were given access to the sequel weeks before the general public and published their reviews prior to the film's release. Similar to the first movie, the initial reactions were mixed, perhaps even more so this time around. Just prior to release, the Rotten Tomatoes score lingered at just 45%, indicating that more than half of the critics were not impressed. Some described the film as aimless and tedious to watch, while others appreciated certain elements such as Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga's performances, they still expressed disappointment that the film seemed unnecessary. Even the favorable reviews recognized that it would likely divide audiences. Of course, they didn't really know what was going on with the first movie either. Most of Hollywood only started praising it once they realized everybody else liked it. But as the release date came and went, it became clear to nearly everyone that the new Joker movie wasn't going to live up to expectations. The movie bombed hard, with user reviews falling well under 40% on Rotten Tomatoes. The momentum the first film had created vanished almost immediately and a whole host of problems emerged. Instead of continuing the story or plot for the first movie, the new Joker tried to go back on nearly all of it. It was like they were trying to stick it to the fans of the first film. All the subtext about society, alienation, and mental illness pretty much vanished. Instead, the Joker was reframed as a punching bag. It feels like direct retaliation to how people saw him in the first movie. The new Joker movie clearly distances itself from the original, which was characterized by its tension and feeling of impending doom. In the sequel, with that doom already realized, the film struggles to determine its direction. As a result, it spends much of its runtime aimlessly wandering. While some critics deemed it boring, audiences found it painfully slow. The musical numbers fail to advance the plot or develop the characters. Instead, they only serve to bring the pacing to a crawl. Certainly there were some positive elements. The opening sequence and the cinematography are notable highlights. However, even as a musical, it ultimately fails short. This reflects the film's tendency to take a middle-of-the-ground approach that leaves everyone unsatisfied. Lady Gaga's portrayal of Harley Quinn feels both underutilized and underdeveloped. The film even omits crucial aspects of her character's backstory. Rather than depicting the Joker as someone who successfully indoctrinates a trained medical professional, she is merely another patient at Arkham. This choice further diminishes this version of the Joker, making him appear even more pitiful. The film had a lot to prove to justify its existence, yet it fails to provide a compelling reason. Instead, two main motivations gradually emerge. First, it appears that the movie aims to undermine the original film and its audience either by altering established elements of the story or by reinterpreting its characters in new ways. Without spoiling the ending, it's evident that it was crafted to frustrate fans of the first movie. Then there's the undeniable factor, the money. 
After all, that's why you clicked on this video. It was clear that neither Todd Phillips nor Joaquin Phoenix had any desire to create this movie. They recognized that the story was complete and had consistently stated that they wouldn't compromise on a sequel. However, the allure of multi-million dollar payouts and a substantial budget is hard to resist in today's Hollywood landscape. The first Joker was made on a modest budget and achieved remarkable success due to its profound resonance. In contrast, this film represents the exact opposite. Significant financial resources squandered on a project that quickly fizzles out. It's almost ironic to witness this happening to Joker. Audiences aren't concerned with a film's budget. What matters is its quality and the message it conveys. As a much more faithful adaptation of the Joker once stated, It's not about money. It's about sending a message. But what do you guys think about all this? Did you like this Joker sequel? And did you think it needed to have the same level of deep, nuanced messaging as the original? Please do let me know down below in the comments, and as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Okie dokie.